you happy with how it was presented, everything? Uh, yeah, mostly. No, it's great. I think if we had more time, I would have asked for a bigger plane. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's like that. Is this how it's been laid out in other spaces, like specifically where the posters are versus where the, um, the slides? Not really. Actually, it depends on the space. Yeah. So, yeah, like that, it was better because you have this big space. When you enter, you just have the card box, the, the, the books, yeah. and then you have just the picture. And then when you go around, you have the bench. And I think it's, it's built a great space with the uh, two posters. Yeah, yeah. So so when you have these in the, the, the boxes, is that part of it, that there are boxes yeah. there? Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not, not often that you see it presented, like notes or whatever, pr presented in that way. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Like usually they're like on a table. It's like at the front. It's very carefully placed. But it's also interesting to see how people react to that. Like, is this something that I take? Like, is it Yeah, like you're right. Because uh, <laughs> people, they don't want to take it because they think like it's really a stack and like it's, it's not supposed to, yeah, to be taken. Like, I know. also thought that maybe they were thinking that because they hadn't been put out yet, like they, they were still like off limits. Like no one had like put them on the table. Like they weren't in a space that makes sense yeah, to take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I guess some, some people got it. And I just took yeah, one. Yeah. It means that I don't have any morals. <laughs> like I'm just like, oh sure, whatever. That's great. <laughs> it's like a way of testing you, your limits. <laughs> so how did you how did you come to the project? Like how did the the whole concept come to you? Um, actually, when I started to talk with Sarah Maldoror, mm. so the director of uh, Zombie Zangar, you know the poster is yeah. uh, when. So I met her in 2009 because I wanted to see one of her movies about uh, a Guyanese po poet mm. called Léon Gontran Damas mm. and uh, who was part of the Negritude movement. And she, she's one of the only directors who did a movie about, about Léon Gontran Damas. So I met her and we started to discuss. And finally she told me about uh, all her experiences in, the, in Algeria mm. and uh, in Guinea-Bissau and in, uh, in Angola and in Mozambique. And then I did a lot of interview with her and finally we came to this movie, Guns for Banta. And she started to tell me this movie that was shot in the 70s in, uh, in the Bijagos islands, yeah. which is a part of, uh, of Guinea-Bissau, and, and uh, she told me, okay, but you know, this film doesn't exist anymore. That's the Algerian who has it. And I was like, okay, but we, we have to find the, the footage. Mm. That was the first project, find the footage and do a, a real editing of this movie. But uh, I tried several things and uh, I couldn't find the footage, so, but I found this photograph. And that's pretty much how it's, how I came with this idea of doing the slideshow. Is the footage believed to exist and just can't be found, or is it believed to have been destroyed? Mm, for me, they it's dis they are destroyed. Yeah. The footage has been destroyed because um, there were the there were stor uh, storage. It w mm. there was a st storage at in the um, Algerian Cinematheque, mm. and uh, there was a flood. Oh, okay. Uh, so they got rid of all this footage that was, yeah, that were in the cinematic. So it wouldn't have been the government destroying it upon seizing it? That's, that's, people, some people told me that uh, the government, like, burn, used to burn the, the reels, but I don't believe that. Mm. I think it's more like uh, there have been years and years of, uh, I don't know, like, nobody was running the cinematic anymore. So mm. I think they're just, got rid of it yeah like it's not even the government it's just like yeah there was nobody there so what yeah. is it about being told that it doesn't exist that draws you in because you also have that ring in uh in uh was it italian movie that doesn't exist like there's a uh, an absence uh, the, it was an ancestral ring that you ah uh, yeah i destroyed it yeah <laughs> yeah like it's like, yeah, it's, it was a ring belonging to my great-grandfather mm. and it was a kind of, a, he was a Freemason. Yeah. And in, the, in the French Guiana, the Freemasons, they are really the, they are the real political power. Mm. And they were really close to the colonial power. So for me, it was a way to ask a question. Mm. Okay, I have this ring, it's a kind of legacy. What can I do with it? 
how can I transmit uh, this this thing? So I decided to to melt it, but to have the shape of the skull inside the ring. Mm. It's like a counter form. A co yeah, form. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. There is, and, no, uh, sense, yeah. and so it was a way to to deal with this this legacy and to mm. say, okay, uh, maybe if I'm going to sell this this ring, you know, it's like just the shadow of the the, the former one. Mm. And well, yeah. it operates in a similar way where when you're when you're observing it, there's something that's missing that's in the kind of the centerpiece of the. The ex exhibition, like something that's no longer there for whatever reason. Yeah, and, and that was interesting here. And you have a Serge Dany quote about yeah. you know re re replacing an image or, re or putting something that stands in yeah. for something else. And I was wondering what this general concept means to you to have something that is missing or gone or no longer there, but still re being represented in some way. Um. Actually, it comes with the uh, with the type of images of uh, Sarah Maldoror mm. because uh, when I started to work on um, let's say colonial French colonial history, mm. you know that there are a lot of images that were used by the French Empire, you know, to describe the other, mm -hmm. and you know also that where at the same time there were a lot of images produced by the other of themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much what the Sarah Maldoror's movie are about, all, all her movies. So I was like, okay, I need to fill this gap. I need to do it because there are some picture images that need to be reloaded. I don't know if it makes sense, yeah. but uh, it's like some needs to be like um, uh, discharged, like, okay, we, we have to get rid of them and some needs to be reloaded. Mm. And Sam Aldo's movie and our picture, they need we need to to see them. Mm. So it's just it's like for the text, you know, it's like the the work is just having the text and like making the text available uh, again, mm -hmm. and that's it. On well, the last reel, though, there's an image, and, and, and the narration says that it's not going to be shown, like it yeah. can't be shown. It's the yeah. death of the heroine, yeah. but there is still an image. Like there are other parts where there's no image, but there still is an image that accompanies that, and that's one thing that I was curious about. Yeah, actually, it's a it's a way to disconnect completely. Okay, and that that's something I wanted to try, you know, with the voices. It's to at some point to try to connect with the picture in a very didactic way. Mm. And sometimes to be off mm, and yeah, just yeah. to try and to see what it produce, produces on the, on the viewer, actually. Mm. And that was, uh, yeah. So at this time, you can expect or a black frame or like a dead body.